understanding. Open up their ears that they may hear. And God, may the word be applied. And God, may it be a medicine to our hearts tonight. May it be an encouragement to our spirit. And God, may it be a reproof if we need to be corrected. But Lord, use your word now. And I'll thank you in Christ's name I pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. You can be seated. In 2 Kings chapter 18 and 19, Hezekiah the king has received a threat from his enemies. They have said to him that we are going to band together, we are going to come down upon you, and we are going to decimate your cities. As a matter of fact, not only are we going to do this to you, but they said, you know that we've done this to others. We have a long track record of wiping out people just like you. And so they threatened Hezekiah and then they called for a scribe and they wrote these threats in a letter. They had it sealed and stamped by those opposing kings and then they had it delivered to Hezekiah's house. Hezekiah opened that scroll, he read it, and immediately his heart was struck with fear. Immediately he was shook down to the core of his soul. May I stop and ask you tonight, is there anybody that's ever gotten bad news to the point that it shook you to the core of who you are? Maybe it was a doctor's report that was completely unexpected, but it rocked your world. Maybe it was a legal notice that you never saw coming, but there it was, and you didn't know what you were gonna do. Maybe it was a phone call. Boy, how many of you can agree with the preacher right here? When the phone rings after 11, there's something inside of me that gets real nervous. Can I get a witness? And maybe it was a late night phone call Maybe it was an unexpected call that brought news that shook your entire world. Well, I want to say that Hezekiah received some bad news. And there may be somebody here tonight that has received some bad news. Maybe it was a doctor's report. Maybe it was a call from the school. Maybe it was simply a loved one informing you of someone else's condition. I don't know what it may be, but I want to look tonight at what Hezekiah did when he received bad news. Now, you may not need this message tonight, but how many of you know that it's all right if you don't eat the whole meal, it's okay to put it in a doggy bag and take it home for later. And so maybe this isn't right up your alley, but maybe we could just put it in reserve and we might need it sometime soon. What did Hezekiah do when he received bad news? Well, I want to look at three truths out of our text in verse number 14. The Bible said that he received the letter of the hand of the messengers and read it. I want to say, first of all, Notice the fruition of our trouble or of our bad news. Now, Hezekiah had some kings that were against him. They were determined to destroy him. They had made up their mind that they were going to oppose him, obliterate him, and walk through his kingdom until nothing was left. So they sent that in a letter. Now, here's what I want to say. Don't be upset when your trouble comes to fruition. Don't be upset when you find out that there is trouble on the horizon. You know, it has often been said that ignorance is bliss. And that may be true for the time being. But it is imperative that we know that trouble is coming if trouble is coming. Sometimes we get upset when we find out bad news. Don't be upset that you have found out. Be thankful that you have been made aware that trouble is on the horizon. Do y'all understand what I'm trying to say tonight? The Apostle Paul said it like this. He said, have I become your enemy because I have told you the truth? 
Sometimes we're mad at the messenger, but we shouldn't be mad at the messenger. We ought to be concerned with the message that the messenger has brought. In other words, don't get mad at the doctor if he tells you a bad medical report. Just be thankful that you have found out that there is a problem. Sometimes we get all tore out of the frame and and we get upset when it is revealed but the truth of the matter is our troubles revealed are a blessing from God because we cannot begin to deal with it until we are first made aware of it. I tell you, I I wouldn't want a doctor that looks at my, uh, my test results and knows I have problems but he pats me on the back and tells me everything's all right and sends me out the door. If something's wrong, I want to know something's wrong. But so many times we get angry and upset and tore out of the frame when God reveals trouble in our life. Don't be angry that God revealed it. Be thankful for the revelation for now we can begin to deal with what is at hand. That is the fruition of our trouble. But secondly, I want you to notice the facts of our trouble. You see, Hezekiah it had been revealed to him that trouble was on the horizon and the facts are that trouble was coming into his life. There's some things that you ought to know about trouble tonight. Job said in Job 14 verse one that man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. Jesus said it like this in Matthew 5, verse number 45. He said that God in his judgment and God in his righteousness allows it to rain on the just and God allows it to rain on the unjust. So don't be misunderstood tonight and don't be confused. If you are alive on planet earth, trouble is coming your way. There will be difficult times in life. It may come financially. It may come in relationships. It may come through your children. It may come through your health. But trouble is coming. There will be days of difficulty. And that must be revealed to us because when it is uh, revealed, it is a reality. And now what do we do with that trouble? Somebody this week got a bad report. What are we going to do with that? Somebody this week got news that shook you and it tore your world into pieces. What are we going to do with that? Well, we're not mad at the messenger and we're not amazed that it is a reality. So let's do what Hezekiah did. And Hezekiah not only saw the fruition of his trouble and the facts, he did have some enemies, but Hezekiah understood the fate of his trouble. And here's what Hezekiah understood. Yes, I have enemies, hallelujah, but those enemies are still under the control of Almighty God. Yes, I have difficulty, but God is omnipotent. He is in control and there is nothing too hard for him. And Hezekiah knew that though trouble is a fact, and that there is the fruition of trouble when it first is revealed to us, he also knew that the fate of his trouble was in God's hands. And I like what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah took those letters and he laid them out before God. And he said, Lord, here is the trouble in my life. I've got some enemies. I've got some problems And Lord, they're after me. Here's what they said they're gonna do. But before I get shook up over the letter, I'm gonna let the God of all heaven and earth read what's in the letter. And Hezekiah brought it before the Lord. Will you look with me at verse number 15 at what Hezekiah said to the Lord? And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwellest between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone. 
of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord, bow down thine ear and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes and see. And hear the words of Sennacherib, which hath sent him to reproach the living God. And Hezekiah goes on, Isaiah records this prayer as well. And he reads these letters to God out loud. All the while saying, God, Sennacherib is a big enemy, but you're a bigger God. Sennacherib is a powerful foe, but you are a more powerful Lord. So he brings them and he says, God, I've got trouble, I've got enemies, but my fate is in your hands. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to listen to me tonight. Uh, God is bigger than cancer. God is bigger than divorce. God is bigger than a police report. God is bigger than an indictment. God is bigger than a heartbreaking phone call. God is bigger than a world-shaking announcement. He is God and your fate, hallelujah, your fate is not in the hands of cancer. Your fate is not in the hands of an unfaithful spouse. Your fate is not even in the hands of the law. Your fate is in the hand of God and when trouble comes to your house, take that same trouble to the house of God and lay it before him. He said, Lord, my fate is in your hands. And I like this because all the facts seem to indicate that this thing was over and done. Sennacherib was a bad man. He had a bad army and he had a bad reputation. But Hezekiah said, before I lose my mind in fear, I'm going to put my fate back in the hand of God. I want you to listen to your preacher tonight and somebody needs to hear this. Just because things are one way right now doesn't mean that things will always be that way. And the devil will try to tell you that it's over, but the truth of the matter is it's not over until God says that it's over. Just because you have been a drug addict don't mean you have to die a drug addict. Just because alcohol has controlled you doesn't mean that alcohol has to control you. Just because you have had no relationship with your children doesn't mean that you have to die estranged from their fellowship. I'm trying to put some faith in somebody tonight and tell them that our fate is not in the hands of anybody or anything. It is in the hands of God himself. Well, Jonah chapter three, verse nine Jonah goes and he preaches to the city of Nineveh and he said, God's going to send judgment. And it was a stated fact, but the king of Nineveh called for a fast and he called for people to pray. And this was his logic. Who can tell if God will turn and change his mind? If a heathen king had enough faith to say that God can turn it around, then how much more should you and I have faith that God can turn it around? I don't even know what it is, but I know that God can turn it around. I like what the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter nine and verse 15. The Bible says that the Lord is righteous and he said to Abraham, I will give mercy to whom I will give mercy. You might want to write that one down. Romans 9, 15. He said, I will give mercy to whom I will give mercy. In other words, it is up to God what God decides to do. I heard a preacher just this past week, I was listening. As I was doing some traveling, I was listening to a message and this preacher began to say that praying the will of God is a cop-out. And he said there's some things that God just cannot change. And then he said there are other things that God does not get involved with. And I understand that he's trying to build a safe place theologically, but I'm of the belief that God can do anything. And I am of the belief that we are to pray, listen, according to the will of the Father. 
In the model prayer, Jesus said, Our Father which art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When we pray for these that are sick, we do not demand and tell God what to do, but instead we say, Lord, if it is your will, if it could be your will, we ask you to send healing to their body. When trouble comes to our house, we don't dare tell God what to do, but we pray, Lord, if it could be your will, turn this circumstance for the good. I'm here to tell you that the Bible says if we ask anything, hallelujah, according to his will, in his name, he will do it. If it falls into the will of God, then it is in the power of God and we must not tell him what to do, but it does not hurt to ask him to do it. And so Hezekiah here says, Lord, everything's in your hands and my fate And my destiny is in your hands. And Lord, I'm asking that you might intervene on my behalf. And he laid those letters out before the Lord and said, I want you to see what the enemy has said. I want you to see what the report is. I want you to see what I am dealing with And God, though these are facts and though these are are, are statements that have been backed up, Lord, I want you to see what I'm dealing with. And God, I know that you're bigger than the ones that wrote this letter. You're bigger than the ones who have stated the facts. And God, my fate is in your hands. If we were to read all of this story tonight, and we will not, but if we were, we'd find that that Wicked king Sennacherib has encamped himself against the people of God. And at night, God sent an opposing enemy and he fell upon the encampment of Sennacherib, wiped them out, destroyed them. And the people of God, not only were they not defeated in battle, hallelujah, they didn't even have to go to battle because God fault on their behalf the letters were true he did have an enemy the letters were factual that enemy was powerful but Hezekiah had faith that his fate was not in the hand of his enemy but his fate was in the hand of God I remember when I was a little boy my daddy had been, has been a pastor all of my life and there was a time when we were in between pastorates. He had resigned from one church and had not yet accepted the call to another church. And we were living by faith. I thought about this this week. One thing I respect about my dad, he, he is a noted man of God. He's a man of faith. God has done amazing works through his life. And he's a, a very experienced man of God, a very educated man of God. But one thing I respect about my dad is he was never afraid to work. He was never afraid to work. And I remember when we were in between those churches and God was putting us in a place of transition. I remember my dad coming home day after day with a truckload of firewood. And we'd split firewood and sell that firewood. I remember him coming home in the evening after painting houses and he had an old airless spray gun and some rollers and a brush and he'd go out and find houses and barns to paint. And I remember being a little boy sitting on his lap and pulling that paint out of, the arm, out of his arm hairs where it had sprayed back from the wind. And uh, let me say this right here. It's one thing to ask God to meet your needs. It's another thing to ask God to meet your needs and go get a load of firewood to split all at the same time. And I respect that about my daddy, always have. And he had worked hard and he was working hard. But we received an unexpected bill that we didn't have the money to pay. There was five of us children, my mama and my daddy, and he was virtually unemployed painting houses, splitting firewood, doing all he could. 
but we got one of them bills that we wasn't expecting. Y'all ever get one of those? Some of us get them every month. Can I, I mean, it's just a shock every time Georgia Power remembers where we live. But we got one of those unexpected bills, and it was $585. And I remember my daddy bringing all of us kids in the living room of that little rental house where we were living. And he sat us down around the kitchen table, and he said, kids, he got that bill out. And he said, kids, we've got a bill, and we don't know how we're going to pay it. He said, but we're going to trust God that God will meet our needs like he said he would. We held hands around that breakfast table and we prayed. And I remember my daddy praying, asking God to meet that need. Now, that may have meant another house to paint. Can I get a witness right there? That may have meant some more time splitting wood. But we prayed and asked God as a family to meet that need and pay that bill. It was a rainy day that day and we didn't have any work to do. There was no jobs lined up. And there was a big camp meeting going on across town at a church that's actually still there, wonderful church, Rocky Face Baptist Church. My daddy got us ready. We all got dressed, got in that station wagon. How many of you ever grew up riding in a station wagon? I I was 16 before I knew what the sign said. Can I get a witness? I sat in the back looking the wrong way all of my life. That may explain a lot of things that I'm dealing with currently. Man, we got in that station wagon and we went up the road just a few miles to Rocky Face Baptist Church. Walked in, a large meeting, hundreds of people there. Famous preachers, famous singers, and we were just little nobodies, just my mom and daddy and all of us snotty-nosed kids piling out of a station wagon. We went in and we sat down in the back of that auditorium. I'm talking about hundreds of people there that morning. They was having a camp meeting, morning services and night services all week long. We sat in the back. Boy, it was a good meeting. But the preacher got up and he said, the Lord spoke to my heart early this morning. And he said, the Lord told me that we need to take up an offering today and said, there's somebody here that we need to be a blessing to and said, Let's, let's pass the plates and say, let's give an offering to help somebody that's got a need. They passed the plates, and my daddy, I didn't know this, but he told us later that he gave in that offering that morning. Dug in his pocket and gave in that offering. Had no idea who it was for. They took up that offering. They brought it back to the front. The pastor said to some of the men, said, I want you to count that. They counted it, came back, said it's right around $500. Preacher said, well, that's not all the Lord told me. Said, the Lord told me we need to take up an offering. Said, but the Lord also told me how much it needs to be. And said, the Lord told me that offering needs to be at least $585. And he said, pass those plates again. We're not quite there yet. And they took up that offering, and it was that amount. And after the service, he came back to my daddy, put that envelope in his hand, and said, I don't know what this is for. He said, but God put you on my heart this morning and told me this is what it needed to be. And I'm here to tell you something. The devil's going to drop some things off in your lap that are true, (laughs) that you didn't want to (laughs) know, and they're a reality. But your fate is not in the hand of the letter writer. Your fate is in the hand of the letter reader. Lay it out before the Lord. And say, this is what the doctor said. This is what the lawyer said. This is what my ex has said. This is what the police have said. And this is what Georgia Power has said. But Lord, what you say means more than what any of them say. And I can't tell you what God will do, but I tell you what God can do. He can do whatever he pleases to do. And if God chooses to act on our behalf and intervene on our behalf, he can do anything. 